What's up, everybody? Welcome back and happy Skews Day to you. It is March 29th, 2022. I'm Trey Crowder and that's Mark Ag. What's up, Mark? What's up, Trey? You doing good, bud? Um, yeah. uh, now we're going to talk the, the biggest news of the week, uh, the slap around the world in a second. Of course. But before we get to that, did you see that uh, Mark Meadows did a little light voter fraud? <laughs> no, I did not. What, uh, what He vote for uh, his dead papa or something? What did he do? Yeah, so apparently Trump's former chief of staff, right? So he was a congressman from North Carolina. He was in, I think he was in um, Madison Cawthorn's old district we're going to talk about today too. And um, Cawthorn ran and replaced him. But I guess he sold his house in his district when he when he became a full-time resident of D.C. He was no longer a, a congressman. But he still wanted to vote in North Carolina for some whatever reason. So he just registered him and his wife to vote at some mobile home that he'd never even been to or owned or slept at. Mm-hmm. And people usually go to jail for that. Here's a here's an interview with a reporter who figured it out, and that's voter fraud. People with without his resources have been charged with doing very very similar things, and have either gone to jail or been put on probation. And it'll be interesting to see if he gets the same treatment. I'm gonna say no. Yeah, that's also gonna be a theme of the show tonight. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. that just generally doesn't happen. But yeah, no, they the most like doth protest too much ass people yeah. ever. Like, but of course, I'm, in his mind, it's like. Well, no, see, I like, <coughs> sure, maybe that's technically voter fraud, but I'm a patriot who just wanted to do that, so yeah. it's fine. It's not like I was cheating. I was just mm-hmm. not following the rules, but, you know, oh. that's my right yeah, as an I'm American. A, I'm a super citizen. You're just a regular citizen. So right. uh, there's that old, that old quote that conservatism, conservatism is a belief that the law must protect one group of people and bind another group. Mm-hmm. But but also the other group should be bound but not protected. So it's like, yeah, you go to jail, I get protected. That's how the system works. Yeah. Uh, speaking of people not suffering any penalties for wild shit, mm-hmm. uh, Will Smith won an Oscar on Sunday. <laughs> oh, yeah? Is that all that happened? What else did yeah. he do? <laughs> uh, he also smacked the shit out of Chris Rock for making fun of his wife. And everybody lost their goddamn minds. I've never seen the the le- the the. the the nuclear heat of the takes. Uh, there was like people saying that Will Smith should go to prison. Um, there are people saying that uh, uh, Chris Rock deserved to get his ass kicked live mm-hmm. on national television. Well, there were people saying <laughs> that wild r- racial takes from libs that I could not get yeah. over. Including uh, a lot. There were a lot of white people telling other white people to keep their takes out of it. And then they'd be like, and let me expand on that and tell you why yeah. that's what you should do. <laughs> just, just like, you realize you're giving a take right now, right? Like yeah. what, your whole take is about how white people shouldn't give takes and you're a white person giving a take. But yeah, it was like yeah. when they had that big uh, leak of all those celebrity nudes a few years ago, right? Mm-hmm. This was like that, but for hot takes. For everybody, it's just like, just, just what, a new, like an atom bomb of fucking internet hot takes. What one woman was like? Uh, I hope Will Smith. I wish Will Smith would get this mad about white men trying to keep him from voting. Is like, what the fuck are what? you even talking? <laughs> yeah, it is like I, I, I just like you, not everything has to be a big thing. It's a dude lost his shit, slapped another guy. They apparently made up about it after the show, and everybody can just move on with their life. Um, the yeah. like the here's how through the looking glass you were. One of the most sane takes I saw was from fucking Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> she, she was basically like, "Yeah, Will Smith defended his wife, and Chris Walk Chris Walk uh, kept the show going with no whining. Seems like everybody did fine." I was like, "Yeah." Right. She he, it, it, she had to include some crazy shit about how Chris uh, Will Smith was being an alpha male, which you know I don't. Right. So you think you need to consider it manly to go around smack open fan smacking people? Please. No, not over that especially. But yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene. That's the the blind squirrel theory in full effect right there. You know. Like, yeah. You know, every now and then, I guess she'll land on. But like you said, she still had to crazy that up too. But yeah, no, look, this you know, this is a little bit of a different show. We're not uh, we're not extra over here, so I don't know how much we're gonna dive into the whole subject i know we got one other thing a little bit later but just so everybody knows on the well read podcast this week which Corey will put up either later today or tomorrow we of course talk about it for at least like 20 minutes um uh, but yeah I, like i just like the idea the fact that like you shouldn't hit people but also getting one little pop in the mouth isn't the end of your life seems to be two thoughts that nobody can hold in their head at the same time right and, 
Yeah, was, people were saying like he could have killed them and stuff, yeah. and it's like, no, no, it was a slap again. It, dude, I, I've said for years because it's true. Chris Rock is my favorite comedian of all time, and the dude who like directly inspired me to even be a comedian. I love Chris Rock. I thought he handled it like a pro's pro. I, I didn't think he really could have handled it much better than he did. So props to Chris Rock. But like, I'm not on. I'm not defending Will Smith. I'm just saying like. Chris Rock is fine. He got slapped and he's fine. He didn't almost die. You know, it's, uh, I don't know. His tour immediately sold up. It was awesome for him. Yeah. He, he's gonna, probably going to have a bunch of good shit to say about it. I can't um, wait. I just like, I don't know. I had this thought. There's a whole class of people who you can you can tell by their general affect. They've never been punched in the face. Mm -hmm. But then something like this happens and you realize, oh, they think that being hit is the worst possible thing that can happen to you. And just like, I don't know, my, I, I told you this the other day, but my granddad, according to my dad, had a regular Saturday afternoon fist fight with the same dude every week. <laughs> and, the loser, and the loser bought the winner beer. And it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, the good old days, buddy. That is that is some like top shelf papal shit right there. Redneck papal shit, especially yeah. a standing Saturday afternoon fist fight with yeah. presumably one of his best friends. Probably. He's just like, hey, can we push the ass whooping back to four this week? I got a I got a thing with the old lady earlier in the day, yeah. so Get a little don't fresh worry, I'll come through. A little brain damage. Come on. Yeah. Uh, this is, like, I don't know, like I personally am not a fighter. I think the last time I was, I, I think maybe in my adult life, one shoving match, and I think I had one fight in seventh grade in school or whatever. Uh, yeah. my, we were talking about each other's moms and it got out of hand. That's probably close to the closest thing to the Chris Rock thing. Also, Chris Rock didn't write that joke, people. I don't know who did, but they should be slapped for making a G.I. Jane 2 reference in 2022. <laughs> I don't think anybody knew that I, I follow pop culture pretty closely for work purposes and i didn't know that jada pinkett had alopecia and either. just everybody just dude got slapped move on <laughs> yes. speaking of which let's do so so with us as always is producer matt this is weekly skews as usual i'd like to remind you real quick of two things number one if you're vaccinated want to see me live you can go to wellregcomedy.com for tickets i'll be in arkansas this weekend then later in the month portland and then louisville and coming soon i'll have plenty of new dates for you as well so stay tuned i hope to see y'all out there all right second thing if you enjoy the show and you'd like to support us and get some extra skews for doing so you can join us on Patreon. For $5 a month, you get full-length bonus episodes, including the one we're going to record later this week on the subject of secession. That's right. Still a thing, everybody, and it ain't just the South. You got count, You got states wanting to uh, secede from the Union, counties wanting to secede from states, other counties trying to secede from those counties. People are seceding or trying to all over the place. It's, of course, insane, and we'll be talking about it this week on Patreon. So you can go to weeklyskews.com slash more or patreon.com slash Trey Crowder and sign up $5 a month, get a lot of extra good stuff, and help to support this show, which we would verily appreciate. Okay, on the show tonight, we're going to be diving into the ever-mounting pile of evidence against Donald Trump where January 6th is concerned, and the ever-maddening pile of not shit being done about it by A.G. Merrick Garland. How many smoking guns does one man need? we got some other fun stuff along the way for you, but of course, as always, we will begin with the Daily Dumbass. Matt, graphic, please. Tonight's DD, anyone who thought Louie Gomert wouldn't rail a bunch of coke and then dive butt first into a DC orgy wearing nothing but an eyes wide shut mask. That's right. This according to Heil on Wheels himself, Madison Cawthorn, who said this in a recent podcast interview. About education passed that quickly. And That's, everything else is good. Uh, aside <laughs> from that, I mean, the sexual perversion that goes on in Washington, I mean, it, being kind of a young guy in Washington with the average age of probably 60 or 70, and I look at all these people, a lot of them that I, you know, I've looked up to through my life, I've always paid attention to politics, guys that, you know, it, then all of a sudden you get invited to, like, well, hey, we're going to have kind of a, a, a sexual get-together at one of our homes. You should come. And I'm like, what, what, what did you just ask me to come to? Yeah. And then you realize they're asking you to come to an orgy. Yeah. Uh, or, or the fact that, you know, there's some of the people that are leading on the movement to try and remove, you know, addiction in our country. And then you watch them do, you know, a key bump of cocaine right in front of you. 
And it's like, this is, <laughs> Look at that this dude's is wild. Face. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Holy <the> guy, shit. <laughs> this is a podcast called The Warrior Poet, I guess. I don't really yeah. know anything about it. But uh, the question was about whether uh, the, this Kevin Spacey's old show, House of Cards, was realistic. And then he launched into that. Mm. And this was so funny. First of all, I like how he works in uh, a compliment for himself there. Well, obviously, I'm young and hot. He's already right. started the story, right? But, like, this has been so funny because I don't believe anything this dude says. He's full no. of shit, right? But, well, go ahead. But Washington Republicans lost their fucking so, minds. What I, what I was going to say about this is this is literally the first time I've heard this dude say something that I immediately fully believed. Like every other time I've ever heard him talk, I'm always like, this is this dude is more full of shit than anybody I've ever known. But I heard this and I was like, oh, I guarantee you that's true. That's got to be true. I, you know they're yeah. up there just... Dude, they're getting they're they're flogging themselves. They're getting stepped on. They're putting on diapers and getting screamed at till they cry. Like it's just, <laughs> it's ancient Greece shit up there, buddy. You just know it. You know they're filthy. Absolutely, but there's this is they had a, they had a closed door meeting today where Madison Cawthorn didn't show up for to scream at Kevin McCarthy about this. And the reason why is so funny because all of all the other shit he's done, this is the stuff their constituents are calling to ask and complain about. Sure. They, these people go to fucking Nazi rallies, QAnon mm -hmm. shit. Nobody says anything, but they, they said that maybe they did something fun that hit one time and all of a right. sudden everybody loses their mind because they don't want anyone thinking they're cool because they know their constituents are Q people who might come fucking shoot them if they think they're doing well, weird herd stuff. It's funny because you put that in outline and I didn't even think about it that way, but it does make sense. Meaning like I just I just went to, you know, they're the family values party. They can't have people knowing that they, you know, get ripped and open their holes up and stuff. That's not that's not <laughs> Christ like, you know, like that's where my head went. But you said yeah. and I do believe you that they know a big chunk of their constituents are super into Q right now. And yeah. Q's whole thing focuses on like sexual perversion and sexual yeah. predation and whatnot. So you can't be having this kind of talk swirling around you if you're uh, pandering towards that crowd of people. Yeah, I mean, like the thing to remember is like the, the family values mainstream people wouldn't know what Madison Cawthorn said on a podcast, but the people that are active on like or the Reddit thread, the Donald and QAnon forums absolutely would. But the the, the 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 funny thing is like, so he says, by the way, these people secretly are cool. And they go like, actually, we're totally fucking uncool. We're extremely <laughs> yeah. uncool. It got, it got, it got, it got so heightened that one of the guys who was really mad is this guy, Steve Womack from Arkansas, who apparently never talked in these meetings. So the fact he simply stood up at this meeting shocked everyone. And he opened it, he complained and said, one remark that many lawmakers go to bed at 9 p.m., and still use fax machines and flip phones, stating it was inappropriate to paint them all with a broad brush. So I went from not believing anything this dude says to thinking he secretly revealed the truth that they're all fucking. Because the idea that there weren't orgies before fax machines. I know. It, I, <laughs> I was going to say the same things. Like, I don't know. I'm not in that world. But I would speculate that the era of fax machines overlap significantly with the era of coke fueled orgies okay yeah. you know what i mean like we're talking about the 80s all right mm -hmm. like um i feel like fax machines and coke fueled orgies were coexisting for quite a while there that that wonderful decade uh post pill and pre-aids <laughs> people right. just cut loose man and uh yeah these these people like it, it's just yeah, they're all doing coke and fucking. I believe it now. I'm fully on board. Uh, <laughs> uh, but so, the yeah, they're mad. They're mad at Cawthorn, um, and he's had some other issues, right? Like it's yeah. Oh how yeah. How happy like, should we be about this guy's struggles? Is it actually going to amount to anything? Because he's had some some problems. Yeah. So uh, he's in actual political trouble because what he did his home district was so the state the state Republicans redrew the congressional maps. And he decided he wanted to uh, run in an easier district. So he, he registered to run a different district. But then the state Supreme Court said, no, you can't gerrymander like this. And so he's like, oh, shit. So he had to go back to his old district. But a bunch of people had already filed to run. 
including a lady he asked to run who felt betrayed. And here you have a guy doing the, you, the normal thing that would get you booted out of Congress, which was basically saying, I don't like my district. I want to be somewhere else. And then come back hat in hand, begging people to please vote for them. So he might not even make it out of the fucking primary. So he, he, he's, uh, might, his career in politics might be a brief wonderful flew too close to the sun two years um but one thing i wanted to mention about the QAnon stuff about the how this among all the things that uh they've done by the way if you want to keep a, if you want to if you're keeping track at home the stuff that kevin mccarthy has had to uh talk to members of his own caucus about recently uh co besides coke orgies what going to white nationalist conferences Jewish space lasers and uh, depictions of anime violence all of which we covered here <laughs> yeah but but none of that tore the party apart like this because while one side of the family values people saying, how dare you associate it with the coke fueled orgies, the QAnon people are like, you got to name some fucking names, Madison. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's also very – yeah, you've got one contingent there saying if he's really serious about this, then he needs to name names. And you know there's yeah. at least a few other dudes in that room like, shut the fuck up, Larry. <laughs> no, no, he oh. doesn't need to name any names. That's crazy. We all just know it's not true. All right, no reason for yeah. him to name any. Get into specifics. I don't know why we would do that. Fuck. I mean, I, I <laughs> you and I could complain a lot about how fucking old Congress is. I would encourage all of them to take up heavy cocaine use. In fact, I would like the CIA to ship cocaine into into Congress like they did South Central LA in the eighties. Sure. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Might make them actually do something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, of course, these ain't the ones you want doing stuff. Anyway, uh, let's see. What we got? Honorable mentions here for Daily Dumbass. Uh, number one, furries for still being up to their shit even after we busted them months ago on the show. That's right. They're still doing it. Listen to this old boy in Nebraska. Lay it all out for you. Um, it's something that kind of took me back just a little bit, and I'm a little shocked, I guess, is what I would put it. Mm -hmm. About something that would about be furries. Too. If you don't know what furries are, it's where school children dress up <laughs> as animals, cats or dogs, during the school day. They meow and they bark, and they interact with their school, with the teachers and that in this fashion. And now schools are wanting to put litter boxes in the schools. <laughs> the there it is. To use. How is this sanitary? <laughs> I'm going to have a discussion right, with C.E.O. Smith about this. This is something I think. So that's uh, a that's a Republican uh, state lawmaker from Nebraska. And if, if you if people listen regularly, know we did like a whole episode on this uh, a couple mm -hmm. like a month or two ago. There's this moral panic at school boards nationwide about school kids doing furry stuff, and it, it confuses a lot of stuff about like what furries are, what they're up yes. to, how schools work, and how sure. kids' sense of humor work. It's a really fascinating ways, but the it, broad yeah, I was, it's funny that he's like he's so off base about the whole thing. And, but part of it is, is it's like it's almost kind of adorable what he mm -hmm. apparently thinks furries are like. He's appalled by what he thinks furries are. And what he thinks furries are is like 14 year olds putting on bunny ears and like mm -hmm. making animal noises in the halls. Do you know what I mean? Like that's that's all he thinks it is. Just like they bark and meow and stuff while wearing a costume. And uh -huh. he's like, as I live and breathe, what are we going to do about this? And that's just funny to me because I'm not saying all furries, but I know some of the shit some furries get up to uh, would yeah. really blow this guy's hair back. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, yeah, there's, a small, there's a small group of them for whom it's about sex stuff. Yeah. But like, so, and that's fine, by the way. So to recap, what happened here is... Uh, some old boomers uh, misunderstood the one joke that conservatives always make about transitioning, which is I identify as blank, right? They heard about furries. They assumed furries identify as cats, which they don't. Some kids overheard this confusion, thought it was funny, and began trolling. In one school in, I think, Idaho, some kids came to school dressed like cats to fuck around with old people. They got sent home to change because the dress code didn't matter. It's gone mega viral, and we have a full-blown national moral panic about kids meowing. <laughs> yeah. And now, and now for, again, not to reiterate, to reiterate all the stuff we covered in that whole episode, but like furries do not identify as animals, nor do they shit in litter boxes, because again, they're not cats; they are human beings who use toilets. And so, I, like we said when on the the episode where we covered all that, like, dude, in my high school, the boys' bathrooms didn't have doors on the stall. 
the idea that they would be installing litter boxes, you know what I mean, for the, like to to for these handful of kids who want to be cats or whatever. The whole thing mm-hmm. is just is just laughable to me. But um, yeah. moving on, let's say I do want to I do want to say uh, congratulate this guy because he apologized after somebody told him he was wrong. Uh, and uh, I wanted like he, finally one of these people was shame. He didn't double down. He didn't say actually the media is not telling you the truth. There are furries all over high school. He's like, oh shit, I'm an I'm a dumbass. His name's Bruce Bostelman. So shout out to Bruce Bostelman for uh, being the last Republican with shame. Surely, <laughs> but I tell you what, how low is the bar over there? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This guy deserves some props. He admitted he was wrong when he was objectively yeah. wrong. And you know mm-hmm. what? You're right, Mark. Uh, all right. Next up, honorable mention, Joe Biden for not deploying the National Guard on Sunday night in order to combat the slap hard around the world. Let's, uh, let's hear this guy's take on it. One second question. I want to talk about Will Smith and uh, Chris Rock. You know, it's the biggest story right now. You saw the level of violence that was unleashed on on Chris Rock. Is that something that the White House condoned, the type, that type of violence? Do you condemn it? And do you do anything to support comedians who are being attacked and other artists? That's right. So I don't have any official comment from the White House. <laughs> Finally. Uh, I know Finally, that, uh, somebody says it, Mark. The, Oscar, the White House it, has so been... I don't have anything. I don't have any official Trey, comment uh, from him. You or cut it back. The White House, uh, the Trey, White could, house uh, has been leaving us as comedians hanging out to dry for too long. It's high, It's well past time that they assign Secret Service agents to each of us is we're going to go out there and, you know, uh, exercise our courageousness in telling the truth to this society and, and realize that we might get slapped for that. And I think it's time the government stepped in to protect us. This guy's making complete sense to me. Uh, know, this is I, ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, Trey, you need Secret Service protection. Uh, the, I do. The, this is, first of all, I don't know where this guy, where, where the news outlet this guy's from. I, I'm going to guess he's a foreign correspondent, but maybe I'm just being unfair because of his accent. But uh, tra- comedians get uh, attacked fairly often. This isn't like something new. It's uh, people are drunk. They don't like to be made fun of. I personally once had a guy uh, at a bar show in Mansfield, Texas. A guy pulled a knife on me and tried to stab me for making fun of his wife. And I had to fend him off with the base of the mic stand until security could drag him out. Uh, but, she would. Yeah. Yeah, that was a fun. That's the only time. That's the only time anything ever got that bad. But uh, I, I would I, trade. I, I would much rather get open hand, open hand slapped by Will Smith. I'll a see minor, that. a minor league hockey player wanted to whip my ass after the show for a joke I told, but he was so uh-huh. hammered he confused me with another comic who was there and tried mm-hmm. to whip his ass while I was just like standing at the bar getting a beer or something like that. So I didn't even, I found out about it later, but the guy, he was like quoting the joke. It was definitely my joke that I told that got him all pissed off. He was just taking it out on the wrong guy. So, uh, I dodged it, but yes, that, uh, you know, it happens. Like you said, people get drunk. They get mad. You get slapped. You know, what are you going to do? Well, I don't t- think t- it's t- Joe t- Biden's t- fault. <laughs> At the time I was uh, headlining the Velveeta Room in Austin, Texas, and uh, yeah. this lady came up to yell at all of us after the show. She started with me. She goes, I really did not appreciate that Hitler joke you told. And I was like, I didn't, uh, not that I'm mm-hmm. above it, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do a Hitler joke. I don't, I don't, I didn't do it. So she went to the next comic and was like, I didn't appreciate the Hitler joke you told. And he was like, I also <laughs> did not tell a Hitler joke. She went through every comic on the show and none of us had done a Hitler joke. We all, we, we all talked about it after she was gone. We're on, we're all, we'd be honest with each other. Like no one told it. She just completely invented a thing to be mad about in her head and wanted to, wanted to confront us about it. People yeah. are insane lunatics. It's not just celebrities. That checks out. <laughs> Matt is asking me in the chat what the joke was about. I'm not going to tell the joke, but I had a joke where I referenced, the joke was not about or making fun of school shootings, but it referenced school shootings. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it was that, and it was that he was like, all he heard was school shootings. And he came up to my buddy. It was just like, you, you don't fucking joke about school shootings. That's messed up. Whatever. Of course, my friends just saying like, I don't know what you're, I didn't do that. I don't know what you're talking about, but his other hockey player buddies had to pull him off of him. Anyway, moving yeah. on, uh, next honorable mention, anybody who thinks Donald Trump wouldn't use a PR firm to cheat at golf. This is wonderful. In my opinion, you can put this, uh, put this up there. 
Matt, Trump put out a statement in his little newsletter here of utmost importance. I'm going to read some of it to you. It says, many people are asking, so I'll give it to you now. It's 100% true. While playing with the legendary golfer Ernie Els, winner of four majors and approximately 72 <laughs> other tournaments throughout the world, Gene Sowers, Ken Duke, and Mike Goods, all excellent players, I made a hole in one. It took Hell place yeah. at Trump Golf Club in West Palm Beach on the seventh hole, which was playing 181 yards into a slight wind. I hit a five <laughs> iron. I hit a five iron, which sailed magnificently into a rather strong wind with approximately five feet of cut, whereupon it bounced twice and then went clank into the hole. So you can rest easy, everybody. Let, uh, me, let me read one more sentence here because this really hit for me. These great tour players noticed it before I did because their eyes are slightly better. But on that one hole only, their swings weren't. Take that, Ariel's. <laughs> Suck it, you old bitch. <laughs> ah, good call. I, uh, <laughs> definitely worth including. But no, you sent this to me last night, and the first thing I said was, that ain't shit. I heard Kim Jong Il once hit 11 holes in one. Uh -huh. uh, which is true. Of course, it's not true that he did that. It's true that he said it. Not Kim Jong-un, but his daddy once claimed in 1994 uh, that he played his very first ever round of golf in his entire life. And in that round of golf, he hit 11 holes in one and shot a 38 under par. He was five <laughs> foot three. He was five foot three. And this was a 7,700 yard championship course as long as any course ever played in modern championship history. So suck on that, Donald Trump. Okay, how about that? Yeah, even more reason to look up to the Kims. But just it's so, it, it, the overlaps with him and these other, you know, lunatic despots and stuff – are sometimes funny when it involves lying about golf. You know, I don't know, hell, maybe he hit one hole in one. Who gives a shit? It's still just the whole thing is funny. It's like, uh, there's a, someone, uh, I think it was Rick Riley wrote a whole book about how Trump cheats at golf. Like, he's famous for it. He, not, he doesn't even know when he's cheating half the time because his caddies know to move the ball for him before he gets there. So it's like, it's like, uh, who gives a shit? Like, it's like, what? Let, let him have his little fantasy. He's good at golf. Um, do you want to move us through this last one here real quick in the Ohio Senate race, which has been a, right. a fountain of dumbassery? So he, here's your uh, Ohio Senate update. We talked last week about the uh, the big doings at the debate where Josh Mandel threatened to beat up a 70-some-year-old mm -hmm. man. And J.D. got a hit in about uh, how he was also a tough Marine but would never uh, use it to threaten people. Anyway, so this week there was another debate. And Mike Gibbons was asked about a comment he made earlier in the week about how uh, it turns out women have never been oppressed, he said. <laughs> and oh. you will you would okay, not have man. made so, so I guess the dumbass here is women for not knowing that they were never oppressed. But um there's one Until thing Mike I know Gibbons women, and for the record, Mike Gibbons is the business papaw that Josh Mandel threatened to whoop his yeah. ass in the debate. It's the same guy. Yeah. So he so he basically <laughs> You know, there's one thing I know that women love, which when you tell them they don't have it that bad, they should calm down. I uh, love it. <laughs> tell my wife that all the time. She's always like, mm, you know how to yeah. cheer me up. So in the course of defending himself during this debate and trying to get back the uh, support of women, he chose to criticize the only woman in the race. Her name's uh, uh, Timken. By saying that uh, she she doesn't know anything because she never worked. In fact, she didn't make her own she didn't make her own money. She just married into it. So this guy <laughs> this guy's going nuts. But the funny thing was, at least JD got owned. Uh, this clown clown show is fucking ridiculous. Hit this hit this video, man. Where he's defending. This himself. is the guy. This is Givens right here. Yeah. Women have never been oppressed. More than half the women in this state, more than half the voters, are women. So what do you mean by those comments? You have 60 seconds. Well, I guess I would start out by saying um, we made a lot of progress. In fact, in 2016, J.D. got to vote for a woman for president. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a different uh, world. He voted I mean, for Hillary. Yeah. JD's face when he said that fucking yeah. kills me. But yeah, it's yeah. almost like he set this up just so he could say that shit or something. That was, yeah. I, what, way to go, business people, papal. <laughs> one of these people is probably going to be us the next senator from Ohio. And yeah. uh, I guess bad for America. We'll probably get some good content out of it. Uh, <laughs> The, this whole thing is like Gibbons was saying, he, he was trying to clarify his point. 
It was yeah. the yes, people, women had it bad in some ways, but men had to go fight in World War II. So who was actually oppressed? <laughs> Which is yeah. just it's galaxy brain as hell. I, I salute to him. I well, also him it. saying that like women have never been oppressed, and then when asked to qual- clarify, and again, he was just trying to get a dig in on JD, I guess. But for him to be like, listen, we've come a long way, and it's like from what? Yeah. Like if they've never been oppressed what distance have we traveled? Like they've always just been, it's always just been smooth sailing, right? Uh, how else would that work? Anyway, doing that thing I always do, trying to uh, make sense of the nonsensical. Let's get into the main story. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, so a lot of legal shit happened this week already uh, mm-hmm. regarding Trump and January 6th. For starters, uh, let's go with this. There's a clear CNN clip to set this up. Some important breaking news this hour. A federal judge says Donald Trump's effort to stop Congress from certifying the 2020 election results was, quote, more likely than not a crime. The judge's comments came as he ruled attorney John Eastman, who was working with Trump, must turn over 101 emails to the January 6th committee. Tina's Paul Reed joins us with the latest on this. This is the decision here. Uh, Paul, it's a big deal. The president saying more likely than not. Yeah. So um, this has all been legal wrangling over. Eastman is Trump's lawyer. He's the one who devised that six-point plan to overthrow the election, right? He's the mm-hmm. one who was emailing with Pence's man, say, basically saying that Pence was a huge pussy for not overthrowing the election, and that's why the mob was going to kill him. They're doing this during the insurrection. All right, so the January 6th committee has been trying to get a lot of his documents, but he's saying, I actually have attorney-client privilege. Now, I don't think Trump ever actually hired him or paid a retainer as his attorney, so that's always legally dubious. But this was so this is about a bunch of shit. But this judge's ruling is basically comes down to something called the crime fraud exception. Basically, you can't your law. You, you can tell your lawyer all your secrets about crimes you committed in the past. You cannot help you have your lawyer help you plan future crimes. Yeah, like actively commit a crime. If the yes. communication between you and your lawyer involves mm. the committing of a crime, yeah. then attorney-client privilege does not apply. A law license is not a license to be a criminal, is the general right. idea. Yeah. So, makes now, sense w- to me. W- where Eastman got fucked here is uh, he had some leaked emails that came out because there were group emails where he sent two tr- uh, people in Trump's circle. They were saying, well, since we're doing all these other things that are illegal and unconstitutional, we might as well do this other one thing that's lesser. You see, he put that in writing. So, not only does he, he, he puts in writing that he knows, like a lot of this stuff's about intent. Because if, if, if he believed what he was doing was legal, he's probably fine. But because he put in writing, he knew it was a crime. He basically just confessed and gave the whole fucking game up. So I, But this was like this came out like months ago. So I don't know why everything's taking so long. That's what's getting so right. pissed off. It's, it's annoying everyone. It's like, this all happened out in the open. We have another set of right. elections <laughs> in yeah. a few months. It's so wild, like how, like you said, how just open most of it is. It's not even like up for debate. A lot of it is just known. Like it's it's wild that there exists a five or six point memo Mm -hmm. (laughs) that was made for the president that we can all go and read right now, which just explicitly outlines the plan for taking the election from Joe Biden for Donald Trump. Like just in black and white, this is how it's going to work. As long as Mike Pence ain't a bitch, then we got this shit. It's by, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically yeah. what it says. And then, uh, and that's another thing too, is it's like, you know, they want to hang him for it now, but like, what if Mike Pence had just gone along with that at the time? How would it have shaken out? Like it's wild that I don't know everything it's been with, we've been living with it all for so long now and seen so much information and shit come out about it and seen all the footage a hundred times and stuff. But like, you just sort of step back from it again. And it's just, this shit is so crazy. (laughs) Everything about it is so crazy and nothing's happening. it, It also goes into this like mental, like one, apparently if you do a crime on TV, no one knows what to do about it. Like it's just like, (laughs) yeah, Will Smith. yeah, if you just bra- yeah, exactly. If you just brazen, if you just commit do stuff brazenly with no shame, no one knows what category to put it into. It's like did that old like a uh, theory that if you have a clipboard and a headset, you can just walk into anywhere. Everyone assumes right. you know what you're doing. It's like it's sort of yeah. it's like that level of chicanery. But like the idea they'd have some worked out plan, it almost worked. All they had to do was introduce enough chaos to have question, and Trump would just sit in the White House and stay there, and no one else would know what to do. And it, it like it's a stupid plan. 
but stupid plans work all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't know why everyone's so, uh, you know, uh, weirdly uh, Democrats are trying to act like everything's normal. What the fuck is normal about this? So, right. Speaking of which, like that story came out yesterday. This story was also from yesterday. Here's another here's a clip from CBS News. Breaking news on the investigation into the January 6th assault on the Capitol. CBS News and The Washington Post have obtained White House records of President Trump's activities that day, and they reveal a nearly eight-hour gap in entries in his call log and his daily diary. This gap raises big questions about what the president was doing at the time and whether he was using a so-called burner phone, maybe a couple of them. Those are disposable and untraceable. See, Chief yeah. election and campaign you correspondent, it, like uh, this too, like that's what I'm saying. It's like this is, this is so crazy. <laughs> We're talking yeah. about the president using fucking burner phones in the middle of a literal insurrection. It is. I saw somewhere where people were like, "Yeah, it could have been burner phones. He could have been using like staffers' phones or interns' phones or something." It's funny to me to think of him like doing that, but treating them like burner phones. Like he just gets like an intern's phone and he's just walking around like throwing them in the toilet, putting them in blenders and stuff like that. You know, and they're all just yeah. standing like, uh, "Actually, that was okay. It's fine." Throwing them out windows and shit. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's so so wild. Okay, look. Everything the president does is deeply recorded, not just for like for public records reasons and uh, historian reasons, but also just because the president does a lot of shit. He can't really remember all the stuff he did. So someone needs to know what he did and where he was. Right. So but also like to use. So the U.S. government has no record of who he talks to in those eight hours. But every other foreign intelligence service in the world has big boom mics pointed at the White House. He's using unsecured phones to do blackmailable acts. This is a huge fucking problem. And the, the fact that every other foreign country in the world has the intel to send pre- uh, the former president of the United States to jail, who's going to run again, is a huge intelligence problem and blackmail problem. And no one's going to fucking do anything about it. Uh, anyway, we don't hit. But so this is really funny. Um, by the way, there's a lot of public reporting of people who said they talked to Trump a bunch of times. In right. Eight hours. I know. I was going to bring that up, too. I feel like that's been stuff that's like come out along the way. We've heard a lot about like all the phone calls he made with various, you know, Congress uh, people and stuff like that over the course of that day, you know, mm-hmm. during the window that's now missing. So, like, you know, like he was definitely on the phone. <laughs> Uh, just yeah. for some reason, and not on the, the record. People came out and said they made these phone calls in his defense because people right. were saying Trump did nothing during the Capitol insurrection. They were like, I'm, and I like Kevin McCarthy and all these other dudes, like, no, I talked to him a bunch. He was helping us out. He was trying to figure out how to stop it. And here he is deleting the records of the fucking calls where he was allegedly helping. But this is really funny. So President Trump, uh, when he wasn't hitting holes in one, he uh, put out this uh, uh, press uh, statement the other, the other night. In a short statement Monday night, Trump said, quote, I have no idea what a burner phone is. To the best of my knowledge, I have never even heard the term. Five minutes later, John Bolton says he recalls Trump using the term burner phones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Trump uh, shouldn't have fucking talked all that shit about John Bolton then. Uh, I don't know. Like, we talked about it on the show. It's been forever ago now. But Trump seemingly out of nowhere one day went on a Twitter tirade before he got kicked off of Twitter just going in on John Bolton just he was literally saying like you know I've known a lot of stupid worthless idiot pieces of shit in my mm-hmm. day but out of all of them none of them can compare to John fucking Bolton <laughs> this guy is the dumbest most boring asshole I've ever met like literally stuff like that coming from the mm-hmm. president and so yeah i'm not shocked that john bolton's taking every opportunity to <laughs> fuck his shit up as it were um, uh, I, I love their weird their weird beef because every time either one calls the other one a dumb, he's a, a dumb asshole i agree so yeah right <laughs> sure yeah like yeah i'm not yeah to hell with john bolton too um i thought it was hilarious when trump went on that twitter tirade right against him because yeah. it just seemed to be so out of nowhere and it was so pointed and vitriolic and john so, Bolton sucks so it was funny but this is also I'm funny gonna, john eastman isn't really uh trump's lawyer uh so it, 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 fuck him any other way but i just do want to take a moment here to talk about how much it doesn't hit to be donald trump's lawyer because <laughs> first of all he can't really hire a good one the one he has for his new york cases uh one of his many stack of cases he's uh, he's like 
He's got the federal investigation in January 6th. He's got tax problems in New York. He's got fraud problems in New York. He's got uh, a grand jury investigation in Georgia for trying to sway the election. Yada, yada, yada. He's got stuff going on. In New York, his law, he, he couldn't get a good lawyer for law firm. She's basically got this woman who lies about her resume. She says she went to Harvard. She went to like a seminar on like a Tuesday afternoon in Harvard. She went to some lower tier law school, which I don't judge anybody for. But why are you lying about it, lady? And she works like she, she's like she works like New Jersey out of like a mall storefront. She's not like a real lawyer you want for a big time case. Anyway, so a couple months ago, <laughs> she had this really funny hearing because Trump has two different investigations into tax, into uh, fraud in New York. He's got a civil investigation from the state AG, and he, he up until recently had the New York District Attorney investigating. It's not clear where that's still happening because a bunch of couple people resigned. Again, complaining about the same shit we're complaining about, about here's some obvious crimes and no one's fucking doing shit because they're scared. Um, I don't blame them for being scared. They're going to get death threats, but you prosecute the mafia. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So um, so usually when you're in parallel investigations, the same subject matter as a civil investigation and a criminal investigation, the civil investigation will go second because when you get subpoenaed, when you go in there, you'd be like, well, I have a Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. I can't testify about this stuff, but you can still use it in a criminal trial. It almost always gets pushed back. But Trump's lawyer's problem is anybody knows they ever heard Trump talk is knows that he talks a lot of shit and he denies everything. Mm -hmm. So how can you go into court and say, in your honor, my client's in legal jeopardy, him and Jared Navanka cannot testify because of exposed him criminally. And the judge just points to it like a quick Google search. Here's your client saying 400 times they got nothing on him. It's a witch hunt. And his, uh, he didn't do anything wrong. Right. And, he, and she goes, oh, yeah, because you can't say, Your Honor, my client's a dumb fucking liar who wasn't under oath because her client's Donald Trump. He will fire her and she'll get death threats. So anyway, that really hit for me that Trump, the, uh, he got hoisted on his own petard there a little bit. So he's going to he's going to have to sit for subpoenas soon I, uh, for deposition soon. Uh, but back to another one of his lawyers, clown show lawyers who doesn't hit. Eastman, um, just for general understanding of who he is, one, he's friends with Ted Cruz since 1995. Yeah, so you know he sucks. <laughs> yeah. They both clerk for the same lawyer. He's a, 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 a fellow at the Claremont Institute, which is not Claremont uh, College. It's a different thing, but it's in the same town. It's, it's in California, though. So um, and they're like a right wing nut factory who they generate op eds. One of the op eds he wrote uh, during the election was basically saying that Kamala Harris uh, was not constitutionally allowed to be president or vice president because she's not a natural born citizen, not because of any rumor or that he wasn't that she wasn't born here. He was making the argument that because her parents were immigrants. She should not be allowed. She, she does not considered a naturally uh, a naturally born citizen. I might prove I, I could maybe be wrong about this, but I think I could go in there and ask my nine year old that question, and he would know that that makes that person an American citizen, someone whose parents covered so. If you're born here, I feel like that kids learn that in like second or third grade or something and they put it in newsweek and then later yeah. had to apologize and retract it and shit because everybody flipped out because it's ridiculous but yeah yeah and trump though trump read it and literally said this guy's brilliant actual quote this guy's brilliant and brought him on board <laughs> yeah yeah, I mean, like all that stuff can be like it's not. You could have argued argued about that constant meaning of the Constitution about that stuff in like I don't know seventeen ninety five. But our general understanding of what the framers meant from the stuff they did, who they elected president, their understanding of naturally born was just yeah, you're around here because again, the founders weren't citizens of the United States; they were born citizens of the British Empire. <laughs> so their idea of having a strict construction of citizenship is fucking ludicrous. Anyway. Uh, we brought talked about Ted Cruz for a minute, and it's worth pointing out that if anything shitty is happening in Washington, D.C., Ted Cruz is definitely standing adjacent to it. Mm -hmm. So it, another story that came up this week was that Ted Cruz, apparently Trump called him uh, and asked him if he would represent Trump's case at the Supreme Court, if the, if the uh, court agreed to hear it. And Cruz said yes. This is all part, uh, also part of Cruz's plan to gum up the works in the Senate. He's the one, again, who uh, objected to certifying the results in the Senate, led that movement. All these are parallel, like, pincher-type moves to uh, help keep Trump in office. Again, by just sowing enough chaos to create questions where everyone would just stand still and Trump would just keep his ass in the White House and everyone would shrug, right? That's essentially the plan here. Um, Cruz... Like, I cannot get over what a fucking slimy coward this dude is. He just doesn't hit in so many ways. Mm -mm. But it's funny to me that he doesn't hit 
for a, a lot of people he used to hit for, for example, right. He, uh, the, the judge that he clerked with Eastman for, um, is a guy named Luddick. Uh, Luddick talked to the post for this article <laughs> and this, uh, this, this Luddick is, a to put it mildly disappointed in his old protege. He told the post that he believes Cruz who once said that Luddick was like a father to me. So this is going to sting. Played a paramount role in the events leading to January 6th. Quote, once Ted Cruz promised to object January 6th with all but foreordained because Cruz is the most influential figure in Congress willing to force a vote on Trump's claim the election was stolen. So this guy would line uh, Cruz up and at least give him a wedgie, if not uh, have him shot for treason. But, uh, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, anyway, if you're wondering if Cruz might be in any legal jeopardy, um, Eastman, they reached out to John Eastman for this story to ask him if he was talking to his old buddy, Ted Cruz, about any of these efforts. And Eastman pled the fifth. Uh, so there you have it. While uh, Congress and Merrick Garland apparently think they didn't do anything right. illegal, these guys are telling you they did shit that's illegal. So, okay, that's what I want to talk. Before we get into the, the comments and stuff, I just wanted I wanted to ask you what you thought about the whole Merrick Garland part of it all. Like, feels like the silence is deafening. And I, the, committee, the January 6th committee has like explicitly stated like one of them on the committee literally said we're trying to do our job why don't you do your job or something like that like they're calling him out nothing is happening i know for a while people were like you know what well, takes time to build a case you got to build a case but it's like i don't know you can't address it in any way like what the fuck is going on is it just going to stay like this what the hell's happening mark besides nothing i mean look like James Comey, uh, before him, Comey was a, a FBI director, not the AG, but Merrick Garland is an institutionalist. He thinks the system is fine and it's working as intended and the wheels of justice turn slowly. And he's doing a classic like roll up style investigation like you use for like the mob or terror group where you start with the low level guys and go up the ladder. But here you have a federal judge, the story we started with, apparently making your case for you that this mm -hmm. is pretty obvious evidence of a crime. You do not get, need to get the leader of the Proud Boys to flip on Roger Stone, to flip on Steve Bannon, to flip on Trump. Even if you did that, that would take fucking years. Here you have Stone Cold writing from Trump's lawyer to Trump, let's do crimes. Trump did crimes after that. Do something, motherfucker. <laughs> it's also like, I don't, and again, I know the committee has like called him out, but I don't understand. Surely there's pressure from the White House, you would think, or something. I don't understand how they don't recognize the impact this could have in like a grander political sense for the democrats i mean like we there is there are midterms later this year We're in danger of getting their asses whipped like i don't know you just need to fucking do something like it's insane everybody sees all the evidence every day it was literal treason an actual insurrection attempt just this is not this should not be another one of those times where they just don't do anything <laughs> but it's like it seems right. like that's what's gonna happen and it's fucking maddening why would anyone have any faith in any of these people anymore if nothing ever comes of this also why would someone not attempt it again but be smarter about it next time if nothing ever comes from something like this like this is you just this is not the type of thing that you can let slide and no one should need to be told that it's fucking insane. Yeah. I mean, Hitler got sent to prison and still did it again. Uh, the, I, I just, uh, yeah, I don't know. You, you, you get inside the brains of these people and I, I guess this makes a certain sort of sense, but it's only makes sense if you ignore everything happening. Right. right. It's like the, they remember how it worked in the 1980s because they're all 95 fucking years old. They think right. it's going to work that way again. They're going to go to the White House after Trump's elected and all have a drink and smoke a cigar and pass an infrastructure bill or some shit. And it's like, that's not how it's going to work, man. It's just not, it's not, it's not, it's not what's in front of you. And it's like, we, we started off the show talking about uh, people getting hit in the mouth and the type of group of, the group of people who can't imagine anything worse than like, how could you dare lose your temper enough to hit a person or, what, why, why it's the worst to be the worst thing in the world to get hit in the face. The entire Democratic leadership class is that group of people who they think they can think their way around every problem, that a solution mm -hmm. is going to present itself that won't rankle anybody and everyone will be happy with. And sometimes you're just going to get hit in the face. And I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's just it just be that way sometimes. And hey, you got a, got, a, got a group of people who don't want to fight 
And I think I said on the show once that it doesn't take two people to have a fight. It only takes one person who wants to fight and another person who doesn't want to die. And then you got the Democrats who apparently don't have any will to live. So right. this is this right. is what it, what it looks that, like. Uh, yes, that's fucking perfect. Um, all right, Matt, why don't you start throwing us some comments up there for us? Uh, also, I'll take this opportunity to tell everybody, like and subscribe and uh, all that stuff. You know, share it, write it on the on the podcast apps, all that good stuff. Keep watching and doing the internet things, and we we very much appreciate you. There's Anthony Webb. I just I got you, Anthony. I scooped you. He says hit the like button, everybody. But thank you for having my back. I appreciate it. Y'all know how I be uh, forgetful, namely. Let's see. Fred Skull on YouTube. Fred Skull. Huh, I like it. I like it. The Red yeah. Skull, but Fred like, Skull. I dig like it. Red Skull, but Fred Skull. Yeah, we both get it. Me and Mark both. Anyway, yeah. uh, on YouTube says Patreon subscriber in the house. Thank you, Fred. We appreciate you. Yeah, we've uh, we've done a few bonus apps already. Of course, if you know you go and sign up now, you get access to all of them immediately. So, and that will always stay true. So, the longer we do it, the larger the archive will be. And uh, we're doing new bonus episodes um roughly every other week at the very least two times a month two to three times a month full length <laughs> episodes like i said we got another one coming later this week it's going to be fun regina stogner on youtube says the doj just requested 131 additional loggers okay yeah i mean i saw that but they're all the handle the, the handle the caseload of the all the nobodies like i mean we make fun of the people who trespassed and walked around the capitol and took a shit in nancy pelosi's office and they don't they, they suck but like they're not the main problem <laughs> and, right and it's like it, like well, like we're talking about elite impunity all right so like jenny thomas all right while we're on the subject clarence thomas's wife one of the things that came out last week or two weeks ago whenever it was was she was texting mark meadows the guy who committed voter fraud earlier in the show about how they need to overturn the election she was sending him q anon videos all right that's gross but also jenny thomas has a one woman consultancy shop mm -hmm. where people pay her to write amicus briefs for the Supreme court for cases they're hearing. So Clarence Thomas has a direct financial incentive to vote certain ways in cases from people who are paying his wife. He never recuses himself. Right. Democrats are not doing anything about it. This is straightforward corruption. Now, not just the lunatic variety, but a financial variety and everyone looks at it and shrugs like, well, what are you going to do? Make a big deal about it, man. Start I know, with that. right? Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, well, what are you gonna do? It's like I don't just something. Do something. I mean, I don't. I've never expected Donald Trump to go to jail, and I still don't, just because I have no faith in something like that happening in this country. Mm -hmm. But, but it's like, but the idea that they're just not going to do anything, that there's never going to be any real charges or repercussions for anyone that actually matters, is like still extremely upsetting to me and hard for me to stomach like it, it, that's just not it, that's not palatable to say and maybe talking about like going to jail or whatever that's naive and i think but but like the, the general assist committee is not even doing many public hearings put the shit on fucking tv mm -hmm. man make some good footage you got to give cable news something to talk about and you got to make material for tack ads all these people in front of the committee you, the, the they held last night. They held Peter Navarro and Dan Scavino, who was Trump's former caddy, uh, slurred, turned White House security expert and uh, QAnon lunatic. They held them in criminal contempt. It took them months to do that, and all they're doing is referring to the DOJ. The House has a sergeant at arms. They could literally go arrest the motherfucker and drag him in and make him testify. They're not doing that. Why? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the because that would you know it's just. Uh... A certain way to handle things, Mark, with a little yeah. bit of decorum. Okay, mm -hmm. got to be. We're not. It's not the Wild West out here. All right, we're not going to be dragging people around in shackles. We're going to handle this like professionals, because uh, they think that that's the world that we all still live in is where that shit happens or works. Daryl Rutledge on Facebook says the Democrats need an attack dog willing to use the same tactics the GOP use. Yeah, I mean, I've thought for years we should do take some pages out of their playbook and, you know, say to hell with like the high road bullshit. Justin Goldberg on YouTube says, yes, Dem's whole problem is their weakness. So I, it's not just strategic weak. Like the, their brand, the, their brand is a fat and effectual weakness. Right. right? Yes. So like it's, it's not even about whether you accomplish anything. You need to re you need to expand people's imagination of what your political coalition is because we right. look at, they look at Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. They don't be like, well, these are some tough people out there fighting for me. 
like there was a they, someone wrote a really insightful article a couple a couple months ago. I wish I could shout out who wrote it, but it was like the headline was the Democrats don't want to answer the question. And the question is, whose side are you on? Now, <laughs> imagine how, you'd get a, if you asked a, most Democrats in Congress that whose side are you on? Big business for oligarchs versus regular people, working people. You'd get a thousand word answer about how they're on everyone's side. Mm-hmm. You can't be on everyone's side. <laughs> right. It doesn't work that way. So it's just like the whole thing is just mealy mouth. Like just to be less mealy mouth. Just be mm-hmm. less mealy mouth. It, like that would help, even if you didn't accomplish anything concrete in the criminal justice system. Speak firmly and directly about who did something wrong and how you're better. There you go. Carlos Gonzalez on Facebook says Dems need a brand that shows vision, not weakness and self-loathing. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I made a video about this today, and I was saying, like you said, you you were like their brand is ineffectual weakness. And I basically said that in the video I made too. And I, and I said that like a party whose reputation is that cannot survive letting something like this fucking go, just letting it go. Like it's the death nail for uh, a, yeah. a party who already has that type of branding, you know? Yeah. And so I like, I like Sheldon Whitehouse too. He was the only one standing up for Kentonji Brown Jackson. And like, people were like, well, what are they, why would they make a big deal? Kentonji Jackson, Brown Jackson's going to be on the court. Why would they do that? Because you can't just let a bunch of people yell QAnon shit at the first black woman nominated to, to, for the Supreme Court and just sit there and do nothing and twiddle your thumbs and act like it's normal because it, people look at that and think you're a fucking coward. Everybody yeah. thinks you're a coward for that. <laughs> it, long, just, long shot Louie on YouTube says Sheldon Whitehouse has the right idea. Yeah, like Mark is responding to. Yeah, Um, Natalie Nichols, there she is. Hello, Natalie. Natalie uh, freeze dried some stuff and sent 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 it to me in a gift box this week. How about that? She got her hands on a freeze dry machine, whatever it's called, and went a little nuts with it. But we appreciate her in the Crowder household. Producer Matt says I didn't get mine. Uh, Yeah, yeah, she told me in the letter to tell Corey and Drew not to get butt hurt over it. So I guess I'll tell you that too, Matt. Anyway, Natalie says. uh, Tell us about the new thing with Corey. Thank God I'm so bad at so many parts of this. I should have at least mentioned. Uh, me and Corey have, and y'all know Corey, fucking senior Georgia correspondent, Corey Ryan Forrester. We've got a new a new thing. I just keep collecting more new things. But, you know, I like to have fun out here on the Internet. Me and Corey have a new show coming out starting this Friday called Putting On Airs. And, uh, you know, me and Mark, we do the politics stuff. This show will be me and Corey talking about fancy people shit, making fun of rich people, really, and the stuff they do, you Uh know, tea parties and wine and yachts and stuff like that. And, of course, we're both white trash hicks who don't know anything about it. So, And therein lies the humor. At least that's the idea. So, yeah, it's called Putting On Airs. You can get it wherever you get your podcast. And if you want something much sillier, and what we do here at the SKUs, I hope y'all will check it out. Jason Ruderman on Facebook says, we love Corey. Yeah, well, if you love Corey, you're going to love this. We wear little outfits and stuff. It's all very silly. Very silly. But we have, we're having fun with it. Um, so, yeah. Okay, what else we got? Um, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Brit, Betty Veronica over there I just saw says, Trey Poupon. I like that. That's a good. That's good. That's that suits putting on airs. Lisa Golden from Facebook says, I think the problem with the current Democratic Party is they are actually old school Republicans. They like corporate capitalism. I mean, yeah, I feel like the vast majority of Democrats are not even a little bit liberal. They're like center right or moderate at best. And it's just that Republicans are fringe extreme far fucking right. And then you've got like five people who are actual leftists or progressives. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's like, government. we use this term, I think the last episode we talked about it, but like cosmopolitan liberal, liberal is not really actually left wing. It's like, like we talked about like the Disney in, in Florida. It's like, yeah, we're personally fine with ethnic, different ethnicities and sexualities and that we're, we're fine with that. But also, but they're like, would you like to spend money, from, uh, tax money to help them? You're like, oh, no, no, definitely not yeah. that. We're fine with, so, preferably not like in our neighborhood, but generally, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. we're, we think they should be allowed to exist, of course. Yeah. So that's, that's basically, I mean, we're going to, you're going to hear a ton of analysis leading up to the election that's from another universe because it's going to act like, like, like it's super complicated, 
what happened with the economy or Biden's approval rating, but here's a straightforward thing that happened. When Trump was president, the government said everyone a bunch of money. Biden became president, Democrats took the Senate, and they cut it off. So I don't, I don't know. No one's going to bring that up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to be fucking furious. Trump did the most left wing UBI thing in American history, at least since FDR, or at least let it happen. And then Biden said, nope, the good times are over. And then here we are. So. Well, that's a wonderful note to end on. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but you're right, though. Anyway, our right, final reminder is go to wellreadcomedy.com to get a ticket to come see me live. Please do that. Also, go to weeklyskews.com slash more or look me up on Patreon and support the show by paying $5 a month to get full-length bonus episodes of this program, including one coming this week. Okay, with that said, we'll be back here on the regular show next uh, Skewsday Tuesday. Of course we will. And we uh, 